Today on Spotlight, all right, I'm going to get a little self-indulgent here because, uh, ladies and gentlemen, today I bring you the Epic of Alexander Ultimate. Now, this is a fight in Final Fantasy XIV Shadowbringers. This was introduced uh, last year, I want to say, around patch 5.1. I think it's almost been a year since this fight was like introduced. and. Uh, basically, uh, to get into the nitty gritty of it immediately, this is one of the hardest fights of the game. As of this video is uploading, it is considered the hardest fight in the game. And yesterday, we finally got our clear as a group together, and I told myself once we got to the final part of this battle, I would start recording myself so that, you know, when we finally achieved victory, I would upload my, you know, point of view uh, for my YouTube channel specifically, make a spotlight out of it. Give you guys some commentary on the fight in general or just like the process of our progression throughout the last seven to eight months of trying to win this battle. Yeah, okay, I'll get into it. However, if you are interested in like a more raw point of view, well then I will point you to the direction of Ray Zander's YouTube and Twitch page. He streams Final Fantasy 14 all the time. In fact, he streamed a good chunk of our progression since April. So if you're interested in hearing the like the fight raw with just us communicating with each other to do this or do that, then I implore you to go watch his channel instead. Give him a follow on Twitch. I'm pretty sure he appreciates the views and generosity. Anyway, yeah, so this is the epic of um the epic of Alexander Ultimate. You gotta have the entire phrase in there. Ultimate. Ultimate is like the tier of difficulty that uh, pretty much identifies like how difficult this encounter is going to be because in, in Final Fantasy XIV, uh, there are different tiers of difficulty. There's like the normal stuff, there's hard, which doesn't really mean anything, like looking back at it. Uh, then starting from there, we have extreme encounters, which are like, I mean, they're, they're definitely spicier than normal encounters where now you have to deal with a, a time limit, like an enrage timer. You got a few mechanics here and there that you got to perform as a group collectively. Otherwise, everything's just going to go to shit, if not an outright wipe. Then afterwards, for like the raid scene, you have Savage. And for the longest time, Savage was considered the pinnacle of difficulty for Final Fantasy XIV. But starting in uh, Stormblood, uh, you know, expansion 4.0 and above, they introduced the ultimate tier starting with the unending coil of Bahamut. And ultimates are, I mean, they are pretty much an amalgamation of everything that raid tier represented. It is like a combination of multiple fights all thrown together. It's like a hodgepodge, a collective stew of shit, of mechanics that you have to, you have to solve together as a team while also dishing out as much damage as you possibly can. It is like the end-all be-all difficulty of Final Fantasy XIV. Can't get any harder than that. So, uh, for our group that I have here, we decided, okay, um, we got all our Savage done for the current patch. It's going to be a while because uh, 5.4, 5.3 are going to be delayed because of the pandemic and all that. Do we want to start doing ultimate fights? And I, I said I was down because I'm not really doing anything right now in the game. And I agreed to it. So, uh, Ray pretty much put a calling out cards out and eventually we got eight people together. You're seeing them here. And for the last seven to eight months, we've been progging through the fight. We've gone through very inconsistent scheduling. We've gone through a literal fucking hurricane on Ray's end because he was stationed in Louisiana for a bit and he had to get the fuck out because, well, Louisiana is not really there anymore. <laughs> I'm not, I think it's still there. I'm not sure. But we had to go through so much shit throughout the last few months just to keep progressing through this fight. Uh, in fact, <laughs> those that uh, follow the Fund the Charity Room a YouTube page. When we did the charity event in August, I had to put the Metroid Prime 2 run on hold for a couple of hours because I said I had things to do. I ended up uh, raiding Final Fantasy XIV, and it was to continue progressing through this fight because because of scheduling conflicts that we had throughout the, the charity event on my end, namely my internet decided to not work at all. Uh, I had to I had to adjust for a lot of things, but I couldn't I didn't want to delay the next raid meetup because I mean. It's not exactly their fault that my internet decided to shit the bed, so I had to, I, I had to keep uh, the commitment going. So I said, okay, I, I'm not, I'm not canceling. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a few minutes. I'll take a few hours <laughs> to pause the charity event and do, you know, raid for a couple of hours. and come back and finish Metroid Prime too. So yeah, if you're wondering why I disappeared for a couple of hours, it was to progress with this fight. I don't even remember what phase we were on when, <laughs> when I made that pause, but yeah, this is why I, I put the charity event on hold uh, for a couple of hours and. My God, this fight, this fucking fight, man. I, 
I started taking uh, Savage content pretty seriously at the beginning of Stormblood because before then, uh, my only sort of high end difficulty experience with 14 was maybe uh, one or two rounds of like the last tier of the Alexander raids. And even then, I didn't even finish that tier. I never got to Alex without doing it unsynced, and that was just for the mount. But starting with Stormblood, I wanted to have my try at, you know, actually trying to progress through this content while it's relevant, because that's the best time to do raids when it's relevant. Because everybody's doing them, you can find a bunch of groups together. It's just, it's just really fun. It's a really fun social activity, I feel. And, you know, throughout the, the past couple of years, I, I've got a knack for, you know, clearing savages, you know, becoming a more competent player. I like to think that I'm a competent warrior. Uh, that is my main class. I've been a marauder slash warrior main since day one. In fact, uh, that was the class that I was picking during that really fucking old and irrelevant Final Fantasy XIV A Realm Reborn video that I did a couple of years ago. That was, that was a sponsored video. The whole the thing that got this whole train started because since that video, oh my God, I have put so much time and money into Final Fantasy XIV. I, uh, for that podcast review, I put barely 18, 19 hours into it just for the sake of making a video. I have over 6,000 hours now into this game. I shit you not. I have over 6,000 hours of playtime for Final Fantasy fourteen as of this video is uploading because, folks, I mean, I, I there's not much I can say now that I haven't said already. I love this game. This is one of my favorite games of all time. And it's still going, you know. <laughs> that's uh, that's something I could say for another video, an, an eventual 14 look back or retrospective. I get at people asking me, like, y you say you have plans on doing a Final Fantasy 14 video. Like, how would that work? We just do the entire shebang? And I was like, fuck, no, it'd have to be by expansion. You know, I'd make a video for a Realm Reborn, then Heaven Sword, Stormblood, Shadowbringers, et cetera, et cetera. You know, that's how I do it. Because to me, that makes the most sense. But as I was saying, so when we so we so when we started dropping word that all right, starting with uh, starting with this month, we're gonna start progressing through the epic of Alexander, and the the epic of Alexander fight itself is pretty much a culmination, an amalgamation, a combination <laughs> of every single fight, almost every single fight of the Alexander uh, the Alexander raid tier of Heaven's War. Like, literally, this fight has almost every fucking mechanic from those fights all together. Uh, it begins with the fight against the Living Liquid, who was, like, uh, notoriously one of the most infamous encounters of Alexander Savage. Uh, I was just playing... The, I just started playing the game when he was relevant, so I don't really know. I can only go off the horror stories of what other uh, Savage tier players can uh, tell me around those times. But then you also have uh, Brute Justice, which is pretty much, like, like a bunch of robots combined together to make a uh, a Sentai character's wet dream of a mech. Then you have Cruise Chaser, which those that have an eye for detail will notice that it is pretty much the arc from Final Fantasy IX. Uh, though I think Cruise Chaser itself is a reference to a very old Square game called Blasty. In fact, uh, Cruise Chaser will reference itself as Blasty and never as Cruise Chaser, so that's kind of an odd detail. But you know, if, if you got a if you got a hard if you got a hard on for Square stuff, especially from the uh, mid '80s Square. Then I'm pretty sure you'll appreciate the reference. And then it all uh, comes together with an uh, encounter with Alexander himself, which you might notice of those that uh, never played 14. He's like, Alex, Alex is pretty small, isn't he? He's like, it's, it's not quite the Colossus that I remember him as. And it's like, oh, don't worry. This is just an avatar. <laughs> the real thing is still there. In fact, you're going to see the real thing as we get towards the end of this phase. And basically what this entire fight is, what makes it so difficult, not just as like a raid battle in Final Fantasy XIV, but just because how much is asked of the player. And this, not, this doesn't just go for the Epic of Alexander specifically. This goes for every ultimate encounter. What makes an ultimate fight an ultimate fight is not just because you have to do the fight perfectly together as a group, but the fights are long. Like this is a 18 plus minute long encounter with no real breaks. The only sort of break you have is the transition into the final phase because it's a, it's a, it's about a minute long cutscene that you can't skip, but it's just to give you a bit of a, a, a respite to prepare you for the final phase. But besides that, that's it. Like there are, there are no checkpoints. If you fuck up at the 17 minute mark of the fight, for whatever reason, you are back to the beginning fighting living liquid 
it is a marathon of a fight. And for ultimate difficulty, making a mistake doesn't just mean that you're going to die. You're likely going to kill the entire group. And it really does test the patience of not only yourself, but the group as a collective. So if you can manage to, you know, do what we did, you know, start in the, like at the tail end of April and make it all the way to November, stick together through thick and thin and get all this fight done and over with, despite all the mishaps and all that. I mean, I think you got yourself a keeper of a group there. <laughs> And that said, as I, as we're getting ready to head into the final phase of this fight, I do want to take some time to give all my my raid buddies a shout out, and myself, my uh, my tank buddy Gabe, this is Robin, Robin Quick Cool, uh, my healers Maeve, uh, Fetty, you guys are absolutely amazing. You guys are quick to adjust, and get those heals up, and keep me alive, and Gabe. And then we got the DPS. So, I mean, the, pretty much the, the, the stars of the group, I guess, because without DPS, well, we can't exactly proceed with the fight, can you? Uh, Rowan, our ninja, phenomenal dude. He's really funny. Geo, who I, I, I wanted to punch early on. <laughs> but then I got to know him, and he's not so bad. <laughs> I love you, Geo. Uh, Chen, our summoner. Oh, my God. Shout outs to Juan. We're both Juan. And we only found it, like, after the fact, but that's pretty cool. We wands got to stick together. And of course, Ray, our Ray leader, the one that formed the entire group in the first place. I've run uh, multiple Savage content with him throughout the past year and a half, I want to say. And uh, we're pretty much, I, I guess, uh, battle buddies at this point. You know, he's a phenomenal coordinator. He's really good at the call outs. And you can count on him to, you know, clarify a couple of things if you're not entirely sure what's coming up next. Or maybe you might have had an absent minded moment. And he's there to remind you. He's also a humongous asshole and a shitlord. <laughs> so, <laughs> but he's a shitlord that knows what he's doing. One of the best red mages that I know. And I think on the server, too. Is, uh, just to go into that. And, oh, my God. This, uh, this... I, I've seen this trans this transformation like more than enough times already, but I never get sick of it because this is like the exclusive part of the ultimate fight because before then you were just, you were just fighting souped up versions of like previous encounters in 14, but the ultimate version of the fight gets its own exclusive part of the fight. And that's here where brute justice, cruise chaser and Alex combined together to, to form perfect Alexander. And this is, this is it. This is the final part of the fight. And like mechanically speaking, it's not as difficult as the previous phases because uh, some folks are quick to label this as like the Final victory lap. And if we're just talking raw mechanics, sure, cause it's not as hard. I would say it's about on, the, on par as an extreme encounter. But you're still dealing with the exhaustion of having like 13 minutes of fight before this. And the, ang um, the worst part is the anxiety because now you got to this part of the fight. Now you just have to reach in and not fuck up anymore because you have to do all that shit over again if you fuck up here. And sure enough, like the biggest enemy for this part of the fight was our nerves. It was our anxiety. In fact, when we started getting to the tail end of this fight, when we realized, oh my God, we are actually on the verge of clearing this out. When we got to like the final few percent of the encounter and we didn't make it, we would have to take five for ourselves after the fight would reset because we would need to calm down. <laughs> We're literally shaking in our boots. Just trying to gather the gusto to make another attempt. And uh, sure, we had to do that a lot of times, especially as we got to this part of the fight. Oh my God, when we first got to this phase, you should have heard, you should have heard us. We screamed our asses off because we, we this was it. Like we, months of prog got to this point of the fight fucking love it man and I, I just want to go on and say it because <laughs> if you are thinking at all of playing Final Fantasy 14 you're thinking of getting into the series at all do not use this as like a measuring stick of what to expect this is the most difficult content in the game there is a lot of stuff going on because there's supposed to be a lot of stuff going on 
you know, casual content, uh, extreme content doesn't get this fucking crazy. So I wouldn't let that intimidate you if you were thinking of playing the game. There are multiple reasons to play Final Fantasy fourteen, if not just for the battles, for the, for the slice of life gameplay stuff like crafting or just like fun side quests. There's so much to look forward to in fourteen if you decide to pick it up. You know, if you want to pick it up, I know uh, I know the subscription based model is a big turnoff for some. You know, that's valid. You know, that's perfectly fine. I get that. But fuck me, man, I love this game. This I, I can't get enough of this game. Like, I'm on it almost every single day, like, for maybe an hour or two just to do roulettes before, I, like, my day begins anew, or, or maybe as I'm capping off the day, you know. I love this game that much that I wanted to put the time in to learn and complete this fight. To not just, you know, not just to demonstrate my love for the game, but to just to demonstrate to myself that, you know, with enough time and patience, I can become a good Final Fantasy XIV player, because, you know, I, I can't go back. <laughs> I can't go back to watch all the old uh, Final Fantasy fourteen videos I used to upload on Brain Scratch commentaries. Back when we had the Brain Scratch free company and all that, before that uh, eventually disbanded, people went their separate ways and all that. Wanted to find their own pathways in life. Happens to everybody. But I can't go back and watch my old POVs of those videos because I was just like, I was I was getting better at the game, but I still had a lot to learn. And while. I still feel I can improve myself in multiple instances, it just in terms of being able to do really tough mechanics and laying on the DPS as consistent as I possibly can. I, I like this to be a demonstration of like just how far I've come in Final Fantasy fourteen, from like <laughs> the the newbie marauder who didn't know what the hell a GCD meant or an OGCD, a cooldown server ticks, all these MMO term, uh, MMO terms that I was just not jiving with. I was like, what the hell do you mean? So I just hit a button and I attack on it, right? Okay. Why do you call it a GCD? <laughs> no, but nowadays you tell me about this term or that term in 14, I likely know what you're talking about. And hey, man, if you ever, if you ever thinking of playing 14, if you need someone to help you along, you can find me on the Crystal Data Center. I am on the Diabolos World. And uh, basically that's all I can say is like if you if you need help running stuff, just give me the just give me a holler and I'll I'll spare some time with you. Just uh just don't be a creep about it. <laughs> Everyone's hot now. One thing I hate the most is like uh, the, the person fucking smothers me. Because they watch my videos on YouTube and it's like, I appreciate it, dude. But you're also like creeping everybody else out. Creep me out too. No. <laughs> Don't make me blacklist you now. <laughs> but anyway, though, we're about to reach the final ten percent of this fight. This is it. This is like literally the last part of the fight where uh, Alex teleports to the center and begins to capture your players one by one, and you basically have until he captures the eighth player before the fight is over. Oh, fuck, you know, I'll just let this video play out here. Come on, 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 baby. Oh, I want to believe. Let's half million, 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 let's half million. I want to believe. I want to believe. I want to believe. 200,000, I want to believe. 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 Yeah! Yeah! Oh, fuck you! Fuck you! Yeah. Yeah. Die! Oh, die! 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 Yeah. 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 Fuck you! Oh, yes. oh. 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 <laughs> Perfect legend! Suck my, my homies hate God! Yeah. What you're listening to there is seven to eight months of prog finally paying off. We finished the fight together as a group. We've done it. We survived. <laughs> and now we got our titles, the perfect legend. That's the little thing that you can, that floats above your head, basically. It's a means of showing off. You also get a totem that you can exchange for a obnoxiously shiny weapon, which we all rocked right here. I am content. <laughs> that is one of the hardest, if not the hardest fight of the game under my belt. Who knows, maybe future Ultimates will uh, challenge for the spot of hardest fight in the game. 
uh, at some point. I wonder what it's going to be, too. I'm hearing rumors of it's going to be Thornton related, or maybe uh, the Warren Triad. But I guess we'll have to wait until, I guess, patch 5.5. I don't think there's going to be an ultimate in 5.4. Should be pretty interesting, though. I'm looking forward to 5.4, because I just want to get back into Savage content and see the end of Eden. But yeah, again, uh, if you're thinking of playing the game, you can find me on the Crystal Data Center at Diabolos. Jean Bettenkirk at your service. You can always want to lend a hand. All you got to do is ask it. Just don't be a creep. And don't ask me if I'm going to review this. <laughs> because that's one, that's that's a one-way ticket of me saying, oh, you got me. I guess you don't want to engage in conversation, I guess. <laughs> and again, if you want the raw POV, head over to Ray Zander's channel and uh, give him a follow on Twitch. I follow him on Twitch more than YouTube, like I said before. And that'll do it for the spotlight. Thank you all for tuning in. I'll see you guys for the next review. If you want to catch other spotlights that I've done, you can catch the end cards right here. I appreciate your time. I make no apologies for my heads up display. It all makes sense to me and that's all that matters. <laughs> Have a good night, everybody. Take care.